Some of the most incredible watches in the world present a few challenges when it comes to actual ownership. Thought it was all going to be cake and gravy? Think again. These are five watches that aren't exactly what you expected. It's no secret that I would really like a Richard Mille watch. Call me a face tattoo wearing hooligan, a Lamborghini driving footballer if you must, but I can't change how I feel. I like them. I like them since I saw my first and I will continue to like them forever more. Or until I don't. I got the opportunity to wear my favourite Richard Mille, the Rafael Nadal RM027. It's a manually wound tourbillon and it weighs less than a fart. It's surprisingly small, diminutive even, and to quote stupid sexy Flanders, feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Now aside from the fact this limited edition of 50 pieces now changes hands for upwards of $1.6 million, the RM027 has a fatal flaw. The uniquely executed calibre is a lattice work of three-dimensional structures designed to withstand the impact of Nadal's tennis bat. I don't watch tennis. This horological scaffolding looks very cool, but there's a problem. The V-shaped structures top and bottom that cradle the delicate tourbillon and give this movement the shock resistance it needs not to blow up very neatly match the style of the hands. You can see the problem. Telling the time on this watch requires a three-stage glance. The first two to dismiss the dummy hand sat top and bottom, and the third to actually read the time. Just as well Nadal didn't need to be somewhere mid-match. The Patek Philippe 5181R is a piece of unbelievable workmanship, opening up the micro rotor calibre 240 with some of the finest and most delicate skeletonization ever seen. And you can see why. The workmanship in the movement is worth seeing. It's almost a crime that most of this stuff is usually hidden behind a dial. Add the stunning hand engraving, leaving no single surface without hundreds of hours of painstaking craftsmanship, and the watch that results belongs as much in a gallery as it does on a wrist. And to be honest, I think it's probably better that way. You see, skeletonization is a practice that heralded in the courts of the kings as clockmakers vied to get the attention of his majesty's advisors. One way to prove excellence as a watchmaker was to bring the inside out, skeletonizing the clock so the real expertise could be viewed. Just like this watch, exploring every detail, peering through the uninterrupted view from front to back, it's an absolute treat that gains nothing from slapping it on top of a hairy slab of meat. Yes, the worst thing about this watch is the idiot wearing it. And the paler you are, the worse it gets. Call it a misstep, call it an oversight, call it whatever you like, there's no amount of amazing watchmaking that can overcome the grim backdrop of hairy human flesh. I absolutely love writing, and I don't just write these, I've written a few books as well. You can find them on Amazon if you search my name, or there's a link in the description too. Thanks for supporting me. I've wailed on Rolex previously for its polished center links, and our next watch doesn't seem to have learned that lesson. It's the Daytona, but this time I've got a different bone to pick. If you didn't know, the Daytona is a chronograph, meaning it can record elapsed time independently of the running time. Basically, it has a built-in stopwatch. There's a pusher at the top for start and stop, and a pusher at the bottom for reset, conveniently positioned to use on the fly without taking the watch off your wrist. It's great for impromptu snail races and other such opportunities that present themselves in the course of daily life. Except, with the Daytona specifically, when you press those pushers, nothing happens. Why? Because Rolex wanted to make the Daytona water resistant, so it put little screw down caps on the pushers so you can't use them without unscrewing them first. So when you see two snails eyeing each other up for a drag race, you have to take the watch off, unscrew them, but it's too late. The race is already won. It's not like there aren't other chronographs with the same water resistance that do without the screw down pushers. My conclusion, Rolex has close ties with the fun police. One of the best bang for the buck watches out there is the Tudor Black Bay 58. Perfectly sized, perfectly styled, perfectly priced, there's nothing about it not to love. 
It was commissioned by Rolex founder Hans Wilsdorf as an affordable alternative to the Rolex Submariner the very same year the Submariner came out, so it's packed not just with performance, but history as well. And therein lies the problem. No amount of value or build quality or backstory can diminish the unintentional sting from the question, is that a Rolex? No. It is not a Rolex. Well, it's kind of a Rolex. You see, back in 1954, but it's too late. They've gone already, presumably to throw themselves off the nearest bridge from sheer boredom. And that's the great problem with the Tudor Black Bay 58. It is so, so good. But no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, it will reduce you to the practices of a snivelling nerd. If you're looking for something truly special, ultimately cool, then the 1815 chronograph from Erlangensohner is just about exactly what the doctor ordered. In fact, it's a bit more like if the doctor could just prescribe a good dose of morphine for everything and it actually made you better. Wearing one is perfect. Winding it is perfect. Looking at it makes those first two things seem like dog crap. The shape, the details, the dial, and of course the movement are like injecting pure bliss straight into your eyeballs. There are enlightened monks out there who haven't felt contentment quite like this. And that's the big problem with the 1815 chronograph. It's the end of the road. The last stop on a journey that began what feels like a lifetime ago, bright-eyed and naive and full of possibilities. And now it's over, because the 1815 chronograph's biggest problem is that it has the uncanny habit of making every other watch feel just a bit meh. Have you owned an awesome watch that had a catch? Let me know in the comments. Please do like and subscribe as well. I'll see you over on the Watchfinder channel. Thanks for watching.